It's time that an old dinosaur like me came forward and did a brand new review for you good people. Well, today's review is a Patreon request by Johnny Gallagher. And speaking of dinosaurs, that's the subject for today's review, Dinotopia. Now, I've never actually read any of the books by James Gurney, nor have I seen any of the TV shows that came out after. All I know is it takes place on a mysterious island that's isolated from the rest of the world, where humans and sentient dinosaurs live side by side in harmony. For today's request, we're going to be taking a look at the 2005 animated movie Dinotopia Quest for the Ruby Sunstone, which came out right after the 2002 TV series ended. And from what I've heard, a lot of hardcore Dinotopia fans don't really hold it in the highest regard. But the big question is, is it still good? Or should it be extinct by the Ice Age? Let's find out. This is Dinotopia, Quest for the Ruby Sunstone. Roll the footage. The movie begins at an orphanage where we meet our protagonist, and his name is... Are you ready for this? Kex Bradley. Yes, Kex. I mean, seriously, have you ever heard of such a name before? What's it short for? Kexamo? Anyway, age 12 and not being adopted anytime soon, Kex plans to sneak out of foster care and go out to see the world. With his handy-dandy skateboard by his side, he manages to pull off his great escape faster than I'm even able to explain it. After skating around, I presume, San Francisco for a bit, he stows away on a giant ship and hides under a lifeboat. But when a storm hits, the lifeboat is blown overboard with Kex still on board it. When he comes to, he finds himself washed ashore a large island where he meets... Thanks. Huh? <laughs> You're strong for a girl. What? Girls can't be strong? Kex, my brother in Christ, man. Be thankful you didn't say that to Mirko. Jungle, close your mouth before something crawls in there and has babies. I mean, can you really blame him? If Sarah from the Land Before Time showed up and started hitting on me, I'd be scared shitless too. Kex makes a run for it, but gets saved by the dinosaur voiced by Alyssa Milano, who shows him the island of Dinotopia. I'm 12. You're maybe 12. 13 tops. My name is 26. 26? Eh, better than Sarah 2.0, I guess. By the way, what happened to numbers 1 through 25? So I presume, like in the previous works, Dinotopia is a place where a bunch of shipwrecked humans and dinosaurs live together, have fun, play volleyball, and swing from pterodactyls. Kex takes a chance to show off his skills. So here I am, doing everything I can, holding on to what I am, pretending I'm a prehistoric man. However, Kex also brings upon the attention of Mara, voiced by Tara Strong of all people, who's not a big fan of the newfangled nonsense Kex brings to the island. Hey, go easy on him, Mara. He's a newcomer. <laughs> Fell off a boat last night, so he doesn't know our ways yet. Sorry I snapped at you. It's okay. It's just, we've lived side by side with the dinosaurs for centuries. Our ways work for us. We don't need modern ideas ruining things. Well, at least you don't have Wi-Fi. Believe me, the internet ruins everything. So Mara and 26 decide to bring Kex back to their place. Along the way, they meet their resident poopsmiths, Roga and Thud, voiced by Kathy Griffin and Wayne Knight, respectively. And where do you think you're going? Hi, Roga. We're going through the shortcut? Go around! Can't you see we're working? Yeah! Beat it! Oh hey, so Dennis Nedry didn't actually die. That black ink actually mutated him into a dinosaur. Ain't that amazing? See, nobody cares. Also, how shitty did these two have to be that they've been condemned to shoveling dino shit for a living? So much for respecting dinosaurs' dignity. Do I have to pour you a tall glass of shut up juice? Ooh. Anyway, Roga reveals that she's stolen a map that looks like it could lead to treasure. Where did the map come from? Never explained. They dig their way through a cave, or in this case, Thud does all the digging, where he finds a giant red ruby, as well as a secret passageway to a large tomb known as the Lost World Beneath. <laughs> come on! <laughs> What's the matter with you? Oh, what if there's scary creatures in there? 
with big teeth and, and claws and scales. Depends. Ever seen Kevin Sorbo? We cut back to Kex and the others at a hatchery where we're introduced to Mara's father and the caretaker, John, voiced by Diedrich Bader. We see a whole nursery of eggs, baby dinosaurs, and <laughs> dinosaur in rocking chair. This is getting more Berenstain Bears by the minute. We also meet the elder, Albagon, voiced by George Segal, and a giant stone called the Sunstone, which stops radio waves and keeps the island hidden from the outside world. It also powers all the light and energy sources on the island, so you don't have to worry about cranking up the electric bill. An interesting idea and concept, but what would happen, say, if a pterodactyl accidentally flew out of range of the island and out towards the ocean where it could be spotted by passing ships? Don't you think there's a slight chance someone out there might just see them? However, the Sunstone starts to lose power, as if affected by an outside source. That source being Roga and Thud fooling around with the Ruby Sunstone, which inadvertently unlocks a large Triceratops-shaped sarcophagus, releasing the evil Ogthor, voiced by Mad Mod himself, Malcolm McDowell. And he's even madder than ever. I believe I'm entitled to three wishes. <laughs> Silence! You overstuffed gecko. Hey, let her... Don't mumble when you address... Ogthar, the rightful ruler of Dinotopia. Ogthar explains how many years ago he was shipwrecked on Dinotopia. He discovered the magical Ruby Sunstone, which not only made him immortal, but could also help him build an entire army of dinosaur-shaped machines. So basically, it's like the Sorcerer's Stone, but it could also help you build robots. Can I have it? However, he was eventually betrayed by his men and locked inside a stone tomb for thousands of years. Now that he's free, he wants to continue to use his plan of using dinosaur eggs to mutate into his own dinosaur army and take over Dinotopia. What do you want us to do, Akhtar? Bring me dinosaur eggs. Huh? To hatch. With my ruby sunstone star power, I shall create my new army of super scaly warriors to help me conquer this wretched island. With the power of the ruby sunstone, I shall have my own sharp teeth army! Hagen Glorgen Schlagen! With the sunstones now dying all around the island because of the ruby sunstone, John and Albagon head to Waterfall City to give an announcement to the island's residents. And jeez, this city is gigantic! For being isolated from the rest of the world, these Dinotopians sure know how to carry themselves. Albagon gives his speech. But if the Ruby Sunstone has been unearthed, it could be what is causing the Sunstones to die, which means Ogthar could return, placing all Dinotopia in mortal danger. So the Ruby Sunstone is able to feed off other Sunstones... how exactly? What is... Just possessing it the equivalent of having every air conditioner on in the house or something? So with John gone, he leaves 26 in charge of taking care of the eggs. It goes about as well as you would guess. Three little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. 110 percent razor sharp egg sitting skills you got there, 26. <laughs> 26, wake up! What? Have you seen my egg? Your egg? The eggs! Look! Oh no! They're gone! Eh, make that 26%. So now our trio must go on a quest to find the thieves and get the eggs back. Fortunately, they don't have to look very far, because the culprits are the two biggest morons on the whole island. Or as Ogthor calls them... Moronic gods! Kex manages to land some combos on the moronic gods, only to beef it and get stuck in quicksand. Thankfully, he's rescued by Mara in 26. They're getting away! <laughs> Quick! Catch them before they slowly escape with the eggs! But before the trio can catch them, an egg falls out of the cart. And out hatches... Mama! Feed me! Oh dear God, it's the spawn of Satan himself. And he's voiced by Jamie Kennedy. The spawn of Satan. And I'm not 
your mama, you spaz. No. Fine. I can take care of myself. Uh, one question, though. Where are we? What time's dinner? Anybody remember to bring my blankie? And boy, do I gotta go, go, go! Yeah, up until this point, this movie was passable. But once this spaz character enters the mix, it's like a Neanderthal dropping a rock on your foot. He never shuts up. Every scene he is in is constant talking, rambling, and nonsensical jokes. Also, if he's a baby that just hatched, how the heck does he know all these words and phrases so quickly? I'm gonna turn up the bass so loud, it'll practically give you a heart massage while you dance. And if the neighbors complain, you guys get kissed by shiny blue butt. How do you know what bass is? Meanwhile, the moronic gods try to make their way across a bridge, only to incur the wrath of a T-Rex who tries to eat them. They manage to escape while the T-Rex gets a splinter in his mouth from the collapsing bridge. Our heroes follow using the skin of an old dinosaur as a makeshift balloon. Okay then. It works until the T-Rex shows up and pops their balloon. It looks like it's the end of our heroes until 26 sees the splinter in his mouth and goes into doctor mode. That should start feeling better right about now. Yeah? Ah, the classic removing of the thorn gimmick. It always seems to work in these movies. You just take a thorn, pull it out, you're now a baby face. Hi, guys. Uh, huh? Huh? <gasps> 26! <Ta -da! gasps> it's okay. Everything's cool. Oh, Michael Clark Duncan, what are you doing here? How is it that a movie this mid could have such a high-quality voice cast? The T-Rex, whose name is Stinktooth, offers to lead our heroes to Ogthar's secret underground lair beneath a volcano. When they get there, they find that Ogthar has built an entire machine to create his dinosaur army, as well as giant robot dinosaurs called Strutters. And yes, these things were in the books. And who did you plan on having to control these things? Rhoda and Thud? I don't think they'd even be able to control a golf cart, let alone these beasts. And why would you even want to build these machines when you have your own dinosaur army? So Kex, Mara, and Spaz commandeer the bots and create all kinds of carnage in the place. Again, how a dinosaur that's not even a day old knows how to operate a machine is beyond me. Go on, Ogthar, vaporize him already. Say cheese. Okay, seriously, that was your own fault. You're a bigger camper than Wings of Redemption. They manage to get the eggs and the ruby sunstone and head back to the surface. Only for Ogthar to make his big comeback on board his giant robot scorpion. You look like you can use a trim. <laughs> oh, look, now it's a tri-legged top. Hey, if there was an army of three-legged dinos, would it be called a tripod? I hate myself. The final few minutes of this movie are pure chaos. The volcano is about to erupt. Stinktooth suplexes the scorpion robot with his mouth. Kex and Mara trap Ryoga and Thud in quicksand. And Ogthor chases 26 up to the volcano, where she prepares to throw the stone into the fiery pits of Mordor. Ogthor tries to trick 26 into giving the stone back, but the ledge they're on collapses, sending them both plummeting towards the lava. 26 is saved by John, but Ogthor, on the other hand... <laughs> yeah, with how that ended, it may look like Ogthor survived falling into the lava and he'll just bound right back, right? Nope. That's the last we ever see him. And even if he did survive the lava, he'd be encased in a giant tomb of molten rock. He's pretty much done. And so the movie ends with our heroes reuniting with John, the eggs are returned safe and sound, Kex gets to keep an egg, which then hatches, and he's welcomed into his new home on Dinotopia. And that was Dinotopia Quest for the Ruby Sunstone. It was a movie? Or was it a movie? Looking through the whole thing, it actually feels like an extended pilot for a TV show that didn't get picked up. Technical-wise, the animation is nice and colorful, with that kind of Saturday morning cartoon look to it. 
but the characters are mostly forgettable, aside from 26, who, despite being an obvious Sarah clone, is at least likable. Maybe a bit too likable in some scenes. Kex is just your average generic 90s skateboarder kid with barely any backstory to him. And Spaz just needs to be thrown into a freaking volcano with how much of an annoyance he is. But the big problem, even bigger than the existence of Spaz, is the story. Again, I haven't seen the books or TV shows, but I'm sure the average Dinotopia fan would want something more... substantial than this. The script is razor thin, with mostly 90s cliches and tropes, and they don't really delve that much into the actual lore of Dinotopia, with the exception of some characters and locations. It's just a bland, going-by-the-numbers slog to get through, and I doubt even the most hardcore Dinotopia fan would willingly want to sit through this thing. But the big question is... Would I still watch it over the Land Before Time sequels? Well, I could, I could watch the first five, but after that, forget about it. I mean, it's not the worst animated movie I've ever seen, but it's still not that great. A hardcore headache for Dinotopia Quest for the Ruby Sunstones. And who knows, maybe someday I'll give the Dinotopia TV shows a watch. Well... I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and until next time, I'm the Hardcore Dude. Peace out, and cease.